Hey, it's Greg Hurrell here with another screencast in my Vim screencast series. I'm actually going to do a follow-up to my last screencast, which was about Tmux. Uh, so it's not really technically about Vim, uh, but it's going to be short. I, I just felt that I should at least show some of the things that I alluded to in the previous screencast in terms of how they're configured. So this is going to be super quick. Let's just look at the old Tmux conf file there. Um, and there's a couple of things that I want to draw to your attention, um, and then we'll be done. So uh, basic stuff for me, uh, control B is the standard prefix key for Tmux, but I've got it bound to control space. I originally had it bound to control A because I had used screen previously and I wanted to use the same prefix uh, just because of familiarity. Then after a while I switched to space, found it works really well. Space is a key that you can hit easily with either thumb, either thumb and I've found it to be pretty, pretty useful. Uh, we have some mappings that I've overridden. I think the most important ones are these ones down here, uh, where I use H, J, K, and L to navigate between panes. So in this case, if I want to move from the pane on the left to the pane on the right, I'm going to hit prefix and then L. So that means control A, L. Um, and this becomes second nature after a while. Uh, similarly, I have up, down, left, and right bound to resize splits. Resizing isn't something I do that often, so uh, the fact that I have to move my hand off the home row of the cursor keys isn't too bad there. Uh, pre, uh, prefix control space to toggle between the last window is pretty useful. So if I create a new window with prefix C, and then just say I've got some process running here, when I hit control, control space, I can toggle back and forth. I do that all the time, that's pretty useful. Uh, let's have a look here. I find it easier to remember the commands for doing splits if I have the mnemonic in place such that the key I press is kind of like the bar that I'm going to insert in the UI. So if I want to insert a vertical bar in the UI, I'm going to hit prefix vertical bar. And to make that a little easier, I also have it configured that when I do backslash, which is actually the same key, it'll do a vertical split for me. Uh, likewise, prefix horizontal hyphen will make a horizontal cut in the Tmux window for me. Uh, stuff here uh, is probably idiosyncratic to me, but I like to have the name of the session that I'm in, because I tend to use multiple sessions, uh, the name of whatever processes windows I might have, uh, and the name of the user that I'm logged in is, and the host that I'm on, and the time. Uh, a couple of other stuff here which you could read if you wanted in my dot files, um, but I think uh, some of the more interesting stuff is going to be how I've got the mouse configured. So the mouse used to work a certain way in versions prior to version 2.1, and I think now TMX is uh, up to version 2.3, 2.2. Uh, so I've done my best to get it configured the way that it used to work on the old TMUX, and uh, it, it is quite gnarly, so I'm not going to go into great detail explaining how this works. I'm just going to point out that it is in here. Basically means that I can use the scroll wheel inside Vim, and I can also use it outside of Vim. So just say I have got some file here that I can use to create some scrollage. Um, so scrolling works. Uh, one change that I was able to make recently because of the addition of the mouse drag end event is this ability to click with the mouse and let go of it and have that drag end interpreted as a desire to stop the selection but not to leave copy mode. Um, as things used to behave, you could drag the mouse and as soon as you let go, you'd leave copy mode and you'd copy the, the text, which isn't really what I want. What I want is to be able to highlight multiple things. Um, maybe I'm sitting next to someone and talking them through some code and I want to draw their attention to things. I don't actually want to have copy mode disappear and lose my scroll position. Um, so if I do want to select something with the mouse and then copy it, I just have to hit enter, which is the same thing that I would have done if I was using the keyboard to work, move around in copy mode like I'm doing now. Uh, those are really the main things I think in here. I turned search wrapping off because I find it confusing. So if I enter copy mode and I search up for the word echo, you'll see that the numbers in the top right of the screen here are increasing. This is somewhat counterintuitive to me that as I go up in the buffer, the numbers go down because in my mind, in my mental model, 
the numbering should really start at zero at the top of the scroll back, um, but it's reversed. And so what would happen is as I would search through a buffer and get to the end of it, it would wrap around and I would just get completely lost. Um, at least with wrapping turned off, even though the numbers are kind of confusing, I'm not going to wrap around and get completely disoriented. Um, and that's really all I wanted to show. Uh, the final topic that I could talk about here is how Clipper integrates, but that is probably a subject for yet another screencast that I don't want to give right now. Um, but you can see here that I've got Clipper set up such that when I copy something in Tmux, it actually winds up in the system clipboard. And that's something I've shown in other screencasts, but if I go into a buffer now, I can paste it. You see that even though I didn't involve the system clipboard explicitly when copying, it wound up in there anyway, which is quite handy. And the same um, happens inside Vim. But as I said, I'll cover Clipper in another screencast. So thanks for listening. Next screencast is going to be getting back to Vim core stuff. Um, that's all I've got to say about Tmux for now.